Hello viewers, Assalamu alaikum, it's me Nabil Rashid and uh, uh, once again we are here for an interview and most of my students gave a request that they wanted to hear something from my mentor. So finally we have uh, she on our show and I would like to introduce her first then we will talk about the topic. First of all, uh, she has more than two decades of teaching experience. She is assistant professor in National University of Modern Languages, Islamabad, Pakistan. She is former awardee of research fellowship at Columbia University, New York, USA. Her earlier publications include 18th and 19th century English novel, 20th century American fiction, Native American literature, South Asian, Kashmir, and Palestinian literature, poetry and contributions, and, and a lot more and lot more and lot more. <laughs> so, and above, all of these things, uh, I would like to mention one more thing that I was her student uh, in my university life and whatever I am today is because of her. She was also my thesis supervisor uh, back in 2014. So I would like to show it's really an honor to take interview of my mentor, Madam Rabia Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Oh. Walaikum as uh, Nabil, uh, thank you so much for inviting me and it's an honor to be honored by a student like you uh, or former students. Uh, ba basically, they are our, you can say, our oxygen. And if someone honors us, we feel this feeling. The teachers feel like we are doing something So that's good. Uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me over and uh, okay. you may start so, with question. Well, today we are going to talk about, because you have so much experience in writing about American literature, English literature and so, uh, so long list we have. So today we are going to talk about Ral Waldo Emerson. He is also known as Lama Iqbal of America in our South Asian states. So we, when, whenever we talk about him, uh, people always call him that he always uh, talked about self reliance, which was also a message given by Lama Iqbal, uh, who is known as uh, uh, greatest mind uh, in last past, you can say, three centuries in South Asia. So how do you see self reliance by Emerson as compared to the self reliance message given by Lama Iqbal? Uh, first of all, let me just uh, tell you, uh, I have written actually a research paper on this, which has got a lot of, uh, um, you know, material, which is a comparative analysis, basically. So I'm just going to cut it short uh, and, um, and give you the gist of this. Uh, Self-reliance was actually a series of lectures which Ralph Waldo Emerson, one of the fathers of transcendentalism uh, and one of the uh, founding fathers of American philosophy and thought, uh, um, he gave uh, these series of lectures in Harvard. Uh, and uh, actually his whole essay is, uh, is uh, sometimes it is always criticized as a circular prose uh, because there are there's a lot of repetition but the repetition uh, owes uh, to the fact that it is they are all um, lectures which he delivered over a period of time uh, in at Harvard University uh, in America so um, um, uh, you know, I in, developed this interest uh, about uh, Emerson when I was teaching my students and my master's students in Namal, and I was teaching self-reliance. I could see there, there was so many similarities between him and uh, Iqbal. And then I wanted to then, uh, you know, study them, research them. What are the similarities? Has Iqbal, you know, because Iqbal came quite late. Emerson was born in 1809, while Iqbal was born in 1877. So there is a gap of, uh, you know, so many years. So we can say, and then there is an allegation on Iqbal most of the times by some of the critics that uh, Iqbal has drawn from Western philosophy. Uh, however, you know, my research focuses on the fact that Iqbal definitely uh, uh, takes, uh, you know, reads and assimilates Western philosophy. However, he goes uh, way beyond, uh, you know, um, his philosophy goes way beyond uh, any Western philosophers, including Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, 
And this is one essay that I wrote when I went to Columbia University. I had some days to my disposal uh, back in 2018. Or uh, the, the idea struck, struck me, and then I just wrote these, uh, the, the, this comparative analysis. Um, and the idea, um, you know, I will we'll talk as we progress. Okay, I, what is the idea behind uh, the self-reliance? What is self-reliance? So that's uh, how, uh, you know. Okay, so the, the uh, you talk about that you went to Columbia University. So how mm -hmm. did you compare the youth of their country as compared to the youth living in South Asia? And how can we see self-reliance and non-conformity in today's world? Okay, that's a very good question, actually. And it, it is something which is going to be helpful for our youth in Pakistan and in South Asia, uh, you know, if we extend it to that level. But being a Pakistani, I'm talking from that perspective. Uh, well, the first thing that I understood is that as far as the uh, the abilities of the youth are concerned, I don't think that any, uh, you know, our youth is lacking in any of those. However, uh, you know, especially at the university level, uh, there is a lot of research involved right from the beginning. You know, you know, the undergraduates I studied, uh, I actually sat with undergraduates in their class. I audited lectures of some professors and I sat with the undergraduates. Though uh, undergraduates over there, they come from all, you know, ages. They may be from, for example, our age uh, in undergrad is, let's say, 18 or 19. That may vary there from 18 to 26 or something like that. The, some mature uh, students also come over. So owing to that maturity, uh, uh, that is one small factor. However, the system is such that it is very research oriented. The students, they are, they are uh, given the uh, task and I, I'm, uh, uh, that is something that is developing over here also. And I'm hopeful that it is going to, you know, to, to imbibe that culture of research and the students they research and there's a lot of discussion in the class. Sometimes it is like uh, lectures and they're auditing, uh, they're writing notes, they're taking notes, and then they have given the assignments to go and research. So this is how, uh, but as far as uh, the abilities are concerned, if, I, if uh, I'm not taken wrongly, I think abilities over here in, uh, in uh, I think they, they are at par with them, if not oh. better, right? Of course, I can understand because they are doing such kind of work and research in limited sources which we have. So obviously, exactly. Yes. Okay, so. Yes. But that that, that is one thing. Uh, that is one thing. But there is another very important thing. Important thing is that well, once they are doing their research, they are so uh, honest in the, doing their research. Our student, if he captures this small little, you know, and that is actually self-reliance, mm -hmm. right? Self-reliance uh, self is not just self-reliance, but it is self-actualization, self-realization, you know. It, it, it is like that. first you rely on yourself, but again, um, in, uh, in before you misunderstand or anybody misunderstands the self-reliance to becoming, uh, you know, uh, diversive or, uh, you know, diversive in the sense that you become, um, you know, uh, it is it, it, sometimes it is projected in the manner that, uh, you know, you have to be uh, rude and you have to be uh, you know defiant arrogant defiant and yeah. arrogance and defiance no yeah. it has self-reliance and emerson gave a very beautiful bottom line for that he's he for him self-reliance is uh with the absolutely trustworthy he says seated at your heart and who is that god almighty yeah. Right. And that is and that is he and another phrase he uses pre-established harmony. Yeah, yes. According to him, if we leave our self-reliance from pre-established harmony and without that absolutely trustworthy seated at our heart, then that self-reliance is going to go. Let us go astray. However, if we have that in us, which for Iqbal is Khudi. Of course, of course, we all know Khudi, yes. 
but you can explain khudi for the viewers who are living in different parts of the world just in one line sure see uh, yeah see khudi is a self actualization but it is with the uh, you know it is again with the basic bottom line which uh, uh, emerson has also given as self reliance and then he is given as self actualization and self uh, uh, self realization mm -hmm. but khudi is something which it also has that um, concept of fakar mm -hmm. uh, um ab now if you want me fakar to explain that right fuck means you know fucker means uh, you know it's not vagabond you know uh, um uh, fucker means adopted uh simplicity okay. adopted simplicity okay. to put it very sim in simple terms it is adopted simplicity now what i mean by that adopted simplicity is that for example you may have a lot of uh, you know money mm -hmm. right Yeah. and you may be yes using a car you may be going in you know you have a home you have uh, you know all the luxuries around you but adopted fucker is that i want to keep myself simple as as simple as possible mm -hmm. and in my using my car or my home or my intellect or my anything or my intellectual faculties i am not boasting mm -hmm. i am not you know flaunting it out Oh. that is fucker and that is some a point which iqbal has actually given along with uh, uh, this self reliance mm -hmm. in the concept of khudi all right i not, uh, i don't know whether it you be been able to understand no no it's completely understandable now uh, my next question is that how can we see the concept given by iqbal of khudi and self reliance and self actualization given by Emerson, in today's youth, when we look at today's youngsters, a common youngster, how can we see and how can they be motivated for these kind of things? See, the thing is, uh, let me uh, give you an example. Uh, acha, for example, um, can I, uh, you know, speak some of the couplets of iqbal in urdu also course, and, and then i'm going to subtitle it for yes. now see uh, when uh, emerson says that uh, you have to have that pre established harmony yes you know pre what is pre established harmony the creator has given that pre established mm -hmm. harmony in ourselves right. in our youth in ourselves in a human being Never that is human. actually yeah it, that is a computer chip which is injected in us all right 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 now what uh, uh, emerson says he says do you have to have that pre established harmony mm -hmm. and you have to have that absolutely trustworthy seated at your heart mm -hmm. and then you have to do uh, to be self reliance all right right mm -hmm. and for iqbal what does he say he says uh, for example here at one place he says तेरा जौहर है नूरी पाक है तू फरोगे दीदाए अफलाक है तू तेरे सैदे जबू अफरिश्ता के शाही ने शहे लौलाक है तू नाउ वॉट आर द ट्रांसलेशन आई डन दैट ट्रांसलेशन कि ओ ह्यूमन बींग योर गिफ्ट इज मेड ऑफ अ डिवाइन लाइट एंड यू आर प्योर यू आर यू आर टू प्रोपेल द कॉज ऑफ कॉजेज ऑफ द स्काई the angels and the huris are under your belt wow. because you are made you are made hawk of the ultimate quality of the creator now the look at the last line mm -hmm. you are made hawk of mm -hmm. the ultimate quality of the creator meaning there by a human being if he if he fathoms his intellect and he has the absolutely trustworthy seated at his heart with pre established harmony he is the hawk which is created by god almighty and his vision becomes so uh, you know sharp that he can look into look beyond the veneer with the beyond the appearance and you know uh, nabil i'm sure that you must have must remember that appearance versus reality is a yes. big concept in literature yes? yes yes so that is something you actually uh, look at 
you are able to look at if you have that absolutely trustworthy seated at your heart that is why uh, uh, and uh, iqbal for instance says at one place to put it very simplistically apne man mein doob ke pa ja surage zindagi tu agar mera nahi banta na ban apna to ban so here also iqbal is yes iqbal is ask, is asking the youth the human being that go into delve into your deepest ravines of your heart you'll find that goodness you'll find that beauty you'll find that ability to become a hawk and to become something with which you can unravel the mysteries of this universe okay so my next question is that amarsan has very beautifully defined society is a joint stock company and every member is part of that joint stock company so how would you define that to our audience okay now when uh, emerson talks about joint stock company he's talking about that a society sometimes makes you a coward yes makes you a coward right why because you know i have uh, my stakes for example in your uh, you know in your work mm. so i'm going to be uh, you know taking into consideration that however he says that uh, you know it should not be like that yani it should not be a, uh, you should be self reliant enough in order to be a trend setter wow yes in order to be a trend setter instead of becoming a, a part of the joint stock company be a trend setter and please be, uh, keep this in your mind that when he says it, a trend setter he does not mean the defiance which we see in the market today when yeah. in around us today it is not the defiance it is a defiance with the absolutely trustworthy seated at our hearts and with the pre established harmony when we, when you are in unison with that pre established harmony then if you are going to be defiant your going your defiance is going to be worth it yes. right so he when he says um we a, a society is a joint stock company he means that you need to just go beyond that joint stock you know mutual interests yes right you need to take care of other people but not at the expense and in other words what he's uh, saying is implying is that for example uh, you know to be to put it simplistically mm-hmm. uh, for example if i have invested in a company mm-hmm. and then i have to promote that company yes right however that company does not deserve to be promoted the way he's they are asking me to yes understand so this is why he says um uh, that it should not be they should not make you a coward don't become a coward and iqbal again if you are if you ask me why what is the what is has iqbal given in this he has also said the same thing that he, he says that do not you know uh, for example for him it's a it's a it's a it's a uh, death of khudi and he says khudi ki maut hai se pire haram hua majboor ke bech khaye musalman ka jamae ihram now this is a very very uh, strict uh, you know these are very strong words that he has used which mean that um, when self actualization or khudi is compromised hmm. self actualization or is compromised ha yes. huh, is compromised even the highest cleric hmm in the masjid e haram or that is makka is compelled to sell the most sacred dress to a pilgrim that is ihram oh this so much depth in it that you you know i can talk and talk about this thing only Similarly, intellectuals can understand these things yeah uh, and uh, and again there's a beautiful line when he says khudi ko na bech khudi ko na de semo nazar ke evas ke nahi dete shola and nahi shola dete sharar ke evas in translation i can see say that do not give your khudi or self actualization in lieu of gold and money because a benefiting fire a benefiting fire, fire yes. the fire from which you benefit say a, 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 in a cold night is not traded off for a small splinter wow really i have got a benefit if i have got khudi i have got a benefiting fire, fire with yes. me around right benefiting fire right yes and 
I should not sell it for a splinter. Yes. Splinter. Yes. Understand? So this is what Iqbal is saying. And uh, Emerson is saying that, you know, society is going to make you a coward. Don't become so. Yes. And right? uh, so, so in this, this way, all the youngsters and all the students who are listening to us, uh, it's a very clear message to them. Don't become, become coward. Just under the pressure of society, you should become self-reliant because you are a hawk and you should fly high. Thank all right. you. Yes, yes. So uh, I would like to ask you concluding remarks between Elama Iqbal and Amarsan about all this topic. How would like to you would like to sum up? Okay. Now um, you know both these you know great minds think alike. Hmm. We should understand this. So uh, Emerson gave this uh, concept of self-reliance, but I think um, Iqbal has uh, made us uh, immortal. He, his concept makes a person immortal if he has that hoodie self-reliance. And how does he do that? You know, he actually extends this self-reliance to immortality of that soul. Wow. So he even said, after his so, death, he remains alive. Yes, yes. Because, for example, I, again... Uh, uh, you know, um, for our Urdu listeners, I'm going to speak that, uh, you know, yes, for a stanza of four lines in Urdu. For example, he says, Zindagani hai sadaf, hmm. katre nisa hai khudi. Wo sadaf kya, jo katre ko gohar karna sake. Ho agar khud nigroh, khud gar, o khud gir khudi, ye bhi mumkin hai ke tu maut se bhi marna sake. Wow, wow. Right now, here, what is the meaning of this? Let's let's for our international audience, you can say that life is like an oyster. Hmm. Life is like, like an oyster, that. and Hudi is the first drop of water hmm. that it receives. And you know that oysters make yes. pearls. Yes. Right. So what he's saying? What is that oyster which cannot turn a drop of water into a pearl? Yes. What that? Oyster, that life, what is that life which does not make that, you know, hoodie? Pearls, yes. A pearl, yes. So, uh, and then he says, if one's hoodie, if one's self realization, actualization knows how to self evaluate itself, uh, self evaluate, it knows how to build itself, mm -hmm. and it can constantly keep on mentoring itself, mentoring itself mentoring itself, then in all likelihood, even death will not be able to cause you to die. Wow. This is the meaning of this, right? So he actually has um, uh, extended this concept. Iqbal has extended is, this concept into immortality, yes. right? That a person becomes immortal. Because at, uh, at one point, uh, which is one of my uh, favorite, uh, you know, couplet, which I keep on uh, mm -hmm. saying in my classes also. You can that, say it um, here also. Moth, yeah. Moth ko samjhe hain ghafil, ikhtata mein zindagi. Hai ye shah mein zindagi, subha dawa mein zindagi. That wow. actually the ignorant people say, think that this death mm. is the death and finishing off. No, it is just the dusk of life. And the new dawn of life is going to be in the next life. Wow. And I think right? uh, Elama Iqbal and Emerson, they both proved even after their death. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what, what did you say? Sorry, please. I said they both again. have proved this statement even after their death. They become self reliant yes. and they are their still philosophy. alive. Yes, their philosophy is still alive. You you see, American mind and American, uh, you know, the self-reliance, uh, sometimes when they do not have this absolutely trustworthy seated at their heart, then it goes astray. Otherwise, Emerson's philosophy has played, uh, uh, played a big role in, um, you know, uplifting the American society. And similarly, Iqbal's, uh, till the time we were listening to his, philosophy you know it's very unfortunate that that in Anne Mary Schimmel from Germany she is studying Iqbal 
or you know there are westerners who are you know she studied iqbal she did her you know all her studies in uh, in, in iqbaliyat and we we have we have actually uh, you know we have we don't have them in, in him in our courses also well right? so i this think is very so students should be motivated even if it is not in the courses they should give extensive reading iqbaliyat to become self reliant it will make them yes, yes. bigger personality in future <laughs> Uh, a, 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 let me. Can I just yes, add one yes. thing? One, of course. You know, we actually have uh, misused and misunderstood the word "musalma." Hmm. Let me just make a clarification. Musalma is a person who submits his will to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? Just like if in any any organization you abide by the rules and regulations of that organization, don't you? Yes, we do. We do. right so what are we doing we are submitting our uh, will to the authorities yes we are going to abide by their rules so musalma is actually the one who is submitting his will to the creator the creator yes so this is a term which is being uh, misconstrued you know and misunderstood whereas it is a beautiful term when you are working in an organization you mm. need to actually abide by this those rules yes. and that is why iqbal actually gives you a very good omen he for example he says pare hai charkh neeli farm se manzil musalma ki sitare jis ki garde raha hu wo karwa tu hai that human being if he submits his will to the creator yes right musalma is that one i i hope i have clar- clarified yes. that point yes. that if 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 a person submits his will to the creator mm. then he is on beyond the skies beyond those stars yes. right and they those stars and those uh, 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 suns and heavenly bodies are at, at his feet yes right very huge right? message very huge message yes yes true so, anyhow it was really pleasure talking to you and i would like i must tell my audience i i'm just feeling for last few minutes that i am still in my classroom as a university student back in 2014 and you are giving us lecture <laughs> and i am uh, taking some really good points and enhancing my personality so thank you for giving us your time and taking me back to 2014 when i was your student and i'm really honored to have you here and i hope uh, whenever you have time kindly come uh, uh, on our show again and we would really like to welcome you one more time